Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers. We're going to take a look at the Sony A7S, and we're going to do that next. It's Geekazine's coverage of NAB 2014, and it's brought to you by our friends over at Otherworld Computing, celebrating 25 years. Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers from Geekazine.com. We got Mark here from Sony. How you doing? Hi Jeff, how are you? I'm doing great. You know, you've got a brand new. I, I don't normally deal with the DSLR cameras for video. I try I try and get prosumer because one man shop can't deal with the focus, and there's always been sound issues with some of the DSLR cameras. You've got, and, and technically this isn't a DSLR camera, but this is a great camera that I'm starting to think of getting into this realm, and that's in the A7S. And tell us a little bit about that. So this is the latest member of our Alpha 7 family, the Alpha 7 and the 7R we introduced last fall, but the A7S is designed for sensitivity and dynamic range. Okay. It's really the same size camera, the same form factor, the same user interface, the same lens mount, the same full frame imager size. Indeed, it's the world's smallest and lightest full frame interchangeable lens camera. You can see right there, it has a full frame sensor in a tremendously small body. Sure. Let's do this, as you can see right there. But what we've done is we've optimized the image sensor for sensitivity and dynamic range. Okay. It's a 12 megapixel image sensor, which in the full frame area allows us to have enormous pixels which can be very, very sensitive and have very wide dynamic range. E even in low light situations? Sure, that's the whole idea. The camera can operate from an ISO sensitivity as low as 50 all the way up to 409,600 with very, very low noise. We have some sample video here in the booth that shot at ISO 12,800, for example. Okay. But more than just sensitivity, it's really designed for dynamic range to capture an extraordinary range from highlight to shadow without losing blown out highlights or losing detail in blocked up shadows. So it really sort of tests the limit of what can be done with modern image sensors by really building the image sensor for the purpose of sensitivity and dynamic range. That's going to be a tremendous advantage to still photographers, mm -hmm. but perhaps an even more tremendous advantage for videographers. Yeah, especially somebody like myself who has to cross back and forth and can't carry all these cameras on my body while I'm doing a show like NAB. Right, and you won't have to resort to lighting nearly as much in very low or no light situations. Even the autofocus system is tremendously advantaged with the sensor because we can now autofocus in light as low as minus 4 EV. Really? So there are all kinds of capabilities that we can have with this new image sensor. Another one in the context of video is we can capture full HD or even 4K without any line skipping or pixel binning, which is common to pretty much every digital SLR. Okay. Problem SLRs face is that you have to use high megapixel sensors, because when people go to buy SLRs, they probably wouldn't be happy buying a 2 megapixel or an 8 megapixel digital SLR. So whereas pro video cameras will use 2 or 4K sensors, you'd never really find a 4 megapixel sensor in a digital SLR. So with this full frame sensor, we can read out every pixel. Okay. We don't have to line skip, we don't have to pixel bin, so the camera is free of aliasing, free of moiré, free of color falsing that's common when you use a sensor that's not optimized for video. We can shoot full HD, 1920 by 1080, in the camera, recorded in the camera, with high bit rate up to 50 megabits per second. And then for 4K, we output 4K on the HDMI, but we can capture 3840 by 2160 at 24p or 30p, use the full width of the sensor, and uh, for the first time capture 4K without line skipping in a full frame sensor camera. Obviously there are full uh, 4K cameras that read every pixel in the pro space yeah. with super 35 image sensors, but a full frame image sensor is nearly, actually a little bit more than twice the area of a Super 35 sensor, okay. so we can really push the limits of what we can do with sensitivity, dynamic range, color accuracy with this new sensor. Of course, if it wasn't for our sponsor, we would not be at NAB and you wouldn't be catching some of this action. OWC, you know, they have some great memory for you. They got SSD drives for you. They've got a more enterprise solution in their Jupiter line. They've got a lot of great stuff. Memory that's made here in the United States, memory that you can put into your Apple, so you can put in your PC, you can put SSD, you could put an SSD into your Pentium 1 computer, 
using the IDE tr uh, transfer cable. And they've got little adapters that'll do that for you. Lots of cool ways to make your computer have a longer life. Make your computer work a little bit more and save your PC, save your Mac. We have the hashtag, save my Mac. Tell me how you're putting memory from OWC into your MacBook. Maybe your 2007 MacBook, you just put on some Mavericks or something like that. Or maybe you just got the brand new Mac Pro and you want to add more memory but don't want to pay Apple prices. They've got solutions at a fraction of the price. You can check that out over at geekazine.com forward slash OWC. Geekazine.com forward slash OWC for some great ways. And then use that hashtag, save my Mac, to, uh, to tell me how you save money and memory on your Mac. What's the, uh, what's the weight on the camera? Um, I would have to check for an exact spec, but it's well under a pound. Okay. Um, so this is perfect for you know, the whole drone revolution as, as we're seeing it uh, here at NAB. Yeah, and in the booth here, we have a heavy lifter um, dropped off by our friends at DJI, mm -hmm. and they're already developing a, uh, a gyro for this. Okay. So um, you'll, see, you'll see plenty of applications for this camera uh, in uh, aerial photography simply because of its size and weight advantages. Now, uh, you talked about low light situations and, and of course I got a light on this camera and it's still with, with this backlit situation still having a small problem trying to keep up with that. Uh, would, that would this camera completely eliminate the need for a light in a situation like this or uh, it, it would just be a, a major help with a light? Well, again, um, there are plenty of um, videographers that are going to bring their own lighting uh, and we're not saying that it will replace the value of lighting but we can say and it's demonstrated in some of the clips that we have here playing in the booth okay. that um, you can shoot in light that would be nearly impossible to shoot in uh, without lights and get excellent results um, so is it going to shoot in total darkness Perhaps not, but um, is it going to be able to uh, open up opportunities for videographers that they never had before? Absolutely. But it's more than just low light, because not everybody shoots in low light. Yeah. It's also in high contrast situations where the range from highlight to shadow is uh, really beyond the limits of what modern image sensors can can capture. You know, another thing uh, that I like about this camera and uh, for my audience is, is the people that are what are called the vloggers because they're always looking for a very small camera so they can hold it in their hand and, and actually point it right at them. And it looks like a camera like this, you said, under a pound or around a pound, that, that's perfect for them. Without the lens. Without the lens, yeah. Well, yeah, if you, put a, if you put a humongous lens on that, expect a little bit more than a pound. But Another advantage for, uh, for, for those type of applications, uh, the camera, in addition to having high bit rate video capability. It also has low bit rate uh, codecs as well. Mm -hmm. We've built in MP4 at 3 megabits per second uh, because uh, you, you know there are those who need to post right away. Yep. We also have Wi-Fi and NFC in the camera. You're not going to be transferring any high bit rate video to your phone over Wi-Fi, but a 3 megabit per second MP4 file is easy to transfer mm -hmm. and easy to share and upload right away. You can even record high bit rate video and the three megabit per second MP4 simultaneously on a single SD card, so you can keep the high uh, the high bit rate video and a low bit uh, rate copy at the same time oh, okay. on the same card. What's what's the Wi-Fi on here? It's 802.11 uh, B and N. Okay. Yeah, and, and again, it's 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 a peer-to-peer -peer relationship with your phone. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you could be out in the middle of the desert, and uh, you could establish a peer-to-peer -peer relationship uh, with your phone for transfer. And in addition to transfer, you can also use your phone to control the camera. Perfect. And then, of course, I can just hook it up to a router and all, and also hook it up to my computer to, to collect uh, data as well, right? Sure, if you prefer. Okay. Perfect. Well, uh, when's the, what's the availability? What's the price points on it? We haven't, we haven't announced availability or pricing for the camera at this time, okay. but uh, I'm sure we'll do that in due time. All right, well, there you go. Mark, thank you very much for your time. Thanks very much, Jeff. All right, there you go, the A7S. Perfect point and shoot for some of you vloggers out there, some of you uh, that really maybe want to go into 4K uh, on your YouTube videos or on your on your regular videos. This is the camera you might want to take a look at. Jeffrey Powers with Geekazine. We got a lot more video over at geekazine.com and our YouTube channel over at youtube.com forward slash geekazine. Remember that, that hashtag, geek out.